Hi, I'm Kenny Lee, and let's talk about what happens when two waves collide or simply move through each other. So, on this, I've got a set of beads that are right now set up as a transverse wave. Now, we're mostly going to talk about transverse waves, but if you happen to graph a longitudinal wave, it looks like a transverse wave, where a crest and a compression matchup and a trough and a rarefaction matchup. So we can use this analogy for both transverse and longitudinal waves. So let's see what happens when we have two waves pass through each other. A lot of times we call this the superposition of waves. So let's take a look. So right now we have this wave set up where we got a crest and a trough. And down below we've got another set of beads that we're going to use with this cutout. So I'm going to slide this in and we're going to see what happens when we have a crest that will be the green beads match up to a crest from the red beads. Here we go. So here we got a crest from this way, imagine the crest that. See how much bigger this gets? So if this was a sound, it would sound louder right then. Or it'd be brighter if it's lighter, something like that. So if it keeps passing through, now we got the crest of this one matched up to the trough of the red one. You see, it pretty much kills everything out. So if this sound, it would be quieter. If it was lighter, it'd be dimmer. So as the two waves pass through each other, you get this alternating constructive and destructive interference. Here it gets louder, quieter, louder. And as the wave passes through, when a crest matches up to a crest, we get an even bigger crest. They add together. When a crest matches up to a trough, you basically have a hill filling in a valley and it diminishes the amplitude of the wave. So it'll be quieter if it was sound. And so as they pass through each other, we get this alternating constructive destructive interference. And a lot of times we call those beats as they pass through. Now, what happens if the waves don't match up as nice as this one? So let's take a look at another one. This setup has many more waves, smaller amplitude, many more waves. We're going to do the same thing. Pass one wave through the other one. There you go. Had to get them lined up just right. So now we've got a crest and a crest. We get bigger, but as we go through, now we've got a crest and a trough matching up. They nearly cancel out here as we pass through. See, it's not quite as nice of a shape because the two waves have slightly different wavelengths. So they won't match up perfectly as we slide them together. But when a crest matches up to a crest, we get a bigger one. When a crest matches up to a trough, we get a smaller section. So they just add together as they go through. All right, so right there. So this be louder, quieter, louder, quieter. And so, again, add the amplitudes. If you got one amplitude of two meters, another amplitude of two meters, you get a total amplitude of four meters if it's crest to crest. But if it's crest to trough, then the two actually subtract from each other and you get less. So if you had a positive two and a negative two, you get zero. So you actually get no wave there. That's how noise canceling headphones work. They work on taking the background sound and playing it back 180 degrees out of phase. So now a compression matches up to a rarefaction and the two cancel out. So you can actually play sound to actually make the room quieter. All right, thank you. And I hope you enjoyed the demonstration. Tune in again for some more physics. Bye.